Hi, uh, my name is Emmanuel Munguia Tapia. I am a PhD student at the MIT Media Lab. And right now I'm wearing seven accelerometers, one at each wrist, another one at the dominant thigh, another one at every single shoe, and uh, the last one is located at my hip, and the other one is located at the dominant upper arm. I'm doing this because what I would like to do or what I'm doing is training computers how to recognize physical activity in real time. And the possible applications of the system are two. One is checking the wellness of an elderly person living alone. A computer can tell if the person stopped cooking, if the person is not having enough physical activity. The other application is, for example, if your cell phone knows what's your physical activity level, it can tell you feedback about how much energy are you spending over the course of the day. So these are two very important applications. This is how the data looks like. So this is accelerometer data coming from different parts of my body. And if I start performing bicep curls, this is how the data looks like. So it's showing up the motion of my wrists. Hi, uh, my name is Karl Smearing. I'm with the Colorado School of Mines Division of Engineering. I came up with a new type of remote control. Uh, the interesting thing here is you actually wear your remote, you don't carry it. In this particular design that I came up with, it's a two-finger remote where you uh, change a song or, or volume up, volume down on your iPod by pairing index finger contact with a thumb contact. This particular design is perfect for people that are driving in their car, riding their mountain bike. Uh, they can actually change songs while Take, while not taking the hands off their steering wheel or steering car long. It's also great for snowboarders, really, really great. And uh, this is the way it works. Uh, again, combination of index with thumb contact gives you a command. This one, for example, is volume down. This combination is volume up. Then these are for controlling songs. So song, next song. We go back to the previous song. Let's go song forward again. I just stopped it. Okay, here you go. Again, let's make it really, really loud. Everybody hears us. Pretty cool, I think. Well, for all your iPod manufacturers or con iPod control, remote control manufacturers, I think this is the way to go. I am Greg Priest Dorman. I uh, work at Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, New York, where I'm the system administrator for the computer science department there. And I've been doing body-worn computing now uh, since the mid-80s. And uh, what I have is a general-purpose machine. It's running a, a variant of Debian Linux, which is a, an open-source operating system. Anything you can do on your laptop, basically, this, this is able to do. But instead of the display being on a screen I have to stop and take out and look at, it's always in front of my face here, uh, unless I take it off. Instead of the keyboard being something I have to uh, either stop and pull out of my pocket you know, and use, it's just always here on my hand, unless I want to do something with my hand, in which case it's not. Sorry, I'm moving it too far away for you. Um, it's a cording keyboard, which means I've got I can send all the same keys you can on a full big keyboard, but I'm pressing groups of keys at the same time in order to generate unique keys. This keyboard, and I have an earpiece in, which allows me to do voice over IP things, and as, as well, I use something called context-sensitive speech in a program called Emacs Speak. So I'm hearing whatever is on the screen in a way where the computer is changing how it how it says things, changes the the speaker's voice. Uh, in a way that tells me the context of the speech. Uh, um, anchors and web pages are read in a different voice than regular speech, in the same way that you'll see them in a different color. The essential thing this does for me is help uh, compensate for two physical issues. I have a neurological impairment similar to dyslexia, and if I had to give up all the other functions it does, I still would use it as an electronic reading machine. Um, but it also, uh, when I write, I find I tense up when I write. I don't like seeing my writing. I have trouble with writing. When I'm talking about it, I get tense. If I'm walking while I write, I can't physically tense up. And it makes it easier for me to write. Your body is in motion. If you tense up, you're going to fall over. So it, it helps me with that. I also um, had uh, a bicycle accident as a teenager, which left me with some severe lower back issues. And this allowed me to walk around and work or lie down and work. There's nothing on the back. And so I've, I use it to, it's allowed me to keep a job and be a functioning, uh, you know, person rather than being out on disability.